What's up everyone? So today we're talking about deloads. So to be perfectly honest, deloading is something that I never really did for the first maybe four or even five years of training. The first few years, I didn't even know about it. I didn't know it was a thing. And the last few years, I knew about it, but I didn't really believe in it. I thought it was for wimps. I thought that, you know, why would you take an easy week of training? You should just keep training hard all the time. How hard? Well, harder than last time. However, the last few years, I have at least tried to implement deloads into my training, and I do think they have benefits. So in this video, we're going to talk about what deloads are, why you should deload, when you should deload, and exactly how you should deload. So buckle up. Here we go. So what is a deload? Well, it's pretty simple. A deload is a fixed time period where you are training less or easier than before. That's all it is. More importantly, why should you deload? Well, when you are training hard, you are accumulating fatigue. You are increasing your fitness as you adapt to the training, but you are absolutely also increasing your levels of fatigue. If you train hard forever, that is not sustainable. So you need to have a certain time period, roughly one week, where you allow that fatigue to dissipate. So you keep the fitness from before, but you allow that fatigue to leave the body and it sets you up for you know better long-term progress when should you deload well there's going to be two main ways to set it up the first is going to be a fixed or a planned time period so you might say i'm going to train hard for six weeks and then the seventh week will be a deload so you plan this out in advance in your training and you know when it's going to be now i think this has some advantages if you know that seventh week is going to be a deload you can go really hard on weeks five and six because you know in the future, in the very near future, you have this time period that is going to be very easy. The other way is just to do it by feel. So it might be six weeks, it might be eight weeks, it might be five weeks, it might be three weeks if I'm training really, really hard. And this is something I don't know in advance. I don't plan it in advance. I just feel it. So I'll link in the description below the overtraining and overreaching video that I did. And when I'm getting too many signs and symptoms of that, I will take a deload just because I think it's better to do it proactively rather than a set period of time, at least for me. So I have learned to feel when I need a deload. I can just tell if I'm not sleeping well, if I'm getting, you know, achy joints, I will deload before I really get in the hole in terms of fatigue. Which method is going to be suitable for you? Well, I would say if you're more of a beginner, you probably don't need deloads at all, just because you aren't generating that much fatigue because the weights are not going to be as heavy and you can adapt very quickly. So I would say if you're a beginner, you don't really have to worry about deloads at all. If you're an intermediate, I would say a fixed plan with fixed deloads might be better. If you're more advanced, I would say being able to feel and auto-regulate when you deload might be a better strategy just because it could be three weeks, it could be eight weeks. It really just depends on how hard you're pushing your training, how well you are recovering, and it's something that you really need to be able to be a little bit more creative with. Okay, so how exactly will you deload? Well, let's say you're doing five sets of five with 100 kilos. The first way would just be to deload by volume, by doing less sets. So instead of doing five sets of five with 100 kilos, you might do three sets of five, or two sets of five, or maybe even just one set of five. So everything else is the same, you're just doing less volume. Another way would be intensity. So you are reducing the weight on the bar. So instead of five sets of five with 100 kilos, you might do five sets of five with 90 kilos or 80 kilos. And if it's only 80% of the weight you were using before, this should feel very, very easy. Another way will be the frequency. So if you used to do five sets of five three times per week, you could just do it twice per week or once per week. And, you know, this is going to be less stress on the body just because you're getting more recovery time. Another factor to focus on might be RPE or RIR. So this is how close you're going to failure. If you used to be going one rep away from failure, your deload week, you might go four or five or six reps away from failure. Because you're not going as close to failure, 
the fatigue will be a lot less. It'll be a lot lower. And this should allow fatigue over this week to dissipate. However, keep in mind that you have to be honest with your RPE and with your RIR, your reps in reserve. And this can be quite difficult, especially if you're someone like me who tends to really push to failure. Another way to deload, which a lot of people don't really talk about, is simply to do fewer exercises. So if you used to do five sets of five on back squats, and then you followed it up with leg press and lunges and Bulgarian split squats, you can simply remove or reduce those other exercises. So you're doing the same amount of work on the main movement, but because you are removing those other movements, you are actually gonna dissipate fatigue pretty effectively. Another way, which a lot of people don't use, is to manipulate time. So if you usually spend an hour and a half in the gym, just spending one hour or 30 minutes typically means you're going to be doing less work. Not always. Some people, maybe they spend a lot of time on their phone or talking or BSing with other people. But typically, if you're spending less time in the gym, you're going to be doing less work. So let's say you spend 10 hours per week typically. If you spend three hours per week during a deload, this can be a very simple and possibly effective way to manage how much work you are doing. Also keep in mind that you can use a combination. So if I usually do five sets of five with 100 kilos, maybe you can do three sets of three with 90 kilos. So this is gonna be lower volume, lower intensity, as well as lower RPE, just because it's gonna be a lot easier. Also keep in mind that it should be a full week, I think in most circumstances. You might take one or two or three days, very easy, and you might feel great. You might say, okay, I'm, the fatigue is gone, I'm ready to go. Well, not necessarily. If you truly train hard for five or six weeks, you probably need at least a full week to really dissipate that fatigue. And just because you feel good doesn't mean you are good. So you should listen to your body, but also keep in mind, a full week is probably going to be the right amount for most people. So if you haven't been deloading, I highly encourage you to change your opinion on deloads, especially if you're more of an intermediate or advanced lifter. Think about it. If you never have to deload, then you are not training very hard, right? Because if you're actually training hard, you're going to be developing a lot of fatigue, which will require you to deload. If you never deload, then you probably aren't training all that hard. And you might benefit from training harder for a few weeks, maybe that four to eight week zone, and then taking a deload when you earn it. Finally, I just wanna say thank you for all the support. I know my channel doesn't have the most production value, uh, the best graphics, the best edits, the most professionalism. It's just me doing all this, and I'm working really, really hard. So thank you for all the support. It means so much to me. Stay safe wherever you are, and I will see you next time. Peace.